Happy Little Games. Ideas for video games have come from the wildest and wackiest of places. Designer Akira Hashimoto was stuck in a traffic light and noticed a small frog attempting to cross the road. This was the idea for Frogger. The first Grand Theft Auto which featured a top-down view was actually inspired by the chase mechanics of Pac-Man. And then we have the game we are looking at today which is Elevator Action. This run and gun spy thriller extravaganza allowed a little Dorcas Malorcas like me play out the part of a secret agent and gave me the option of shooting all the bad guys and saving the day. What was the crazy inspiration for this game? So reload your weapon and get ready to fire because this is the history of elevator action. Before we get started with the history of Elevator Action, you might be asking yourself, haven't you already covered this game? And the answer would be yes. The third video I ever produced was Elevator Action, and the production values were horrible as I was just starting out. I literally recorded the audio holding a tiny handheld mic, and it sounded like I was sitting on my porcelain throne in the bathroom. A lot of new information and versions have come up in the five years since I made the original video, so I decided to start from scratch giving this classic game the kudos it so rightly deserves. The original video was also only 9 minutes, whereas this one runs about 35. This is probably the most comprehensive video on elevator action on the internet, so if you are a fan of the game, sit back and enjoy the ride. In early 1983, Taito designer Akira Yokozawa is riding high on the success of his previous arcade game which was Jungle Hunt. As I mentioned, Inspiration for video games can come from just about anywhere, and Mr. Yokozawa had been attending a conference in Tokyo with a few colleagues and was bored out of his mind. Because this was a multi-day event with long hours in between, they ended up having elevator races from the top of the building all the way to the bottom. He was a fan of American films and TV, and in particular, the talk show Late Night with David Letterman. The idea for these racers came from this show in which the staffers would oftentimes hold elevator races from the top of the building to the bottom. Something else that had a huge influence was the game Crazy Climber in which you climb like crazy from the bottom of the building to the top. He wanted to take this concept and flip it starting at the top and working your way down. He wanted to create the same type of speed and urgency found in Crazy Climber, but it needed a hook. James Bond and other spy thrillers were very popular in Japan at this time, so he decided to use these elements along with a little bit of rootin', tootin', shootin' action. Elevator Action was released by Taito in 1983. As the story goes, you take on the role of Otto. No. Not that, Otto. Nope, not that one either. Not even Crazy Otto. This man of mystery is Agent 17, codenamed Otto, who is a suave and debonair James Bond type who has to retrieve the secret documents while taking care of all the bad guys as you attempt to get to your getaway car down below. The game is a one or two player action platform game that starts with a nice cutscene of Otto using a zip line to gain access to the top of the building. From here you attempt to go straight to the bottom just like my dating prospects in high school. There are five secret documents in each building that you have to recover, but they aren't that secret because each red door is where you will find them. It won't be easy though because the men in black are out to get you with their massive amount of bullets. It's another one hit wonder type of game meaning if you get hit just once you will die. The building contains 30 floors with the difficulty increasing the closer you get to the bottom. 
The main mode of transportation is the elevator, which thankfully you can control its ascent and descent if you're inside. The elevator is a bit slow while you are waiting for it and it will pause for a couple of seconds on each floor. If need be, you can jump across the elevator shaft but be careful you don't fall to your doom. Your weapon of choice is your standard spy issued gun which takes out all the nefarious trench coat wearing baddies. If you find it just a little too bright inside the game, you can always shoot out the lights which if you time it just right will fall onto the enemy's heads and knock them out. The enemies are like a fungus among us because they will randomly pop out of the blue doors so you have to be on your toes. They will also chase you using the elevators and escalators to their advantage. You can fire your gun three times before it will pause to reload. If you are close enough to the enemy, you can press the jump button which will drop kick your opponent and take them out. Another way to take out those dastardly enemies is to squish them using the elevator. Speaking of the elevators, it is possible to get a ride on top of the elevator car, but be careful because you can be squished on top as well. Each building comes with a set of magic escalators. The reason these are magic is because if you are riding on one and an enemy shoots you, the bullet appears to go around and you are unharmed. As you progress through the levels, the enemies become smarter, actually ducking down, shooting at your knees, and then eventually flat on their tum-tums, in which your only means of defense is to jump over their bullets. It's important to collect all the secret documents as you make your way down, because if you reach the bottom of the building and miss any, you have to go back and retrieve them before you can complete the level. If you successfully retrieve the documents and make it to the bottom of the building, your getaway car awaits to whisk you off to the next level. Once you complete each building, the game repeats only at a higher difficulty. The graphics do a great job at representing our resident hero and the baddies who are all dressed in black. The catchy music was composed by Yoshino Imamura, who apparently also developed the iconic Bubble Bobble theme, among others. The game was a huge success in arcades, and it soon found its way to a number of home computers, which I will cover at the end of this video. Thanks to the Cutting Room Floor website, some prototype graphics were found, including a more long and lean Agent 17. Now I can't blame them for changing this because it's hard to catch criminals while wearing high heels. The enemies also featured the same long and lean proportions as Otto. There is also an unused barrel object in which the enemies would have hidden inside. Very cool. it was Batman, then it was Superman, and finally, after 11 long years, elevator action returned to the arcades. The game was titled either Elevator Action 2 or Elevator Action Returns depending on what part of the world you were located in. This is a fantastic one or two player game that takes the technological advances of the last 11 years and perhaps some performance enhancing drugs and puts it on display for all to see. The first thing you'll notice upon starting up the game is you have three different characters to choose from, each one with different attributes. Each character not only has his own unique primary weapon, but also a sub-weapon including hand grenades, fire bombs, and proximity bombs. Speaking of, the animation is very smooth thanks to the Taito F3 package system hardware that powers this big bad mamma jamma. The gameplay is very similar to its predecessor, although this time instead of being able to move down the building, 
This game allows the player to move in all directions, sometimes having to backtrack through the level in order to reach a new section. The enemies have also been upgraded with a wide variety of baddies looking to destroy you, including zombie soldiers, guard dogs, karate agents, and more. Thankfully, this time around, you do have a health bar, which greatly increases the fun factor, in my opinion. You still have various elevators and escalators to assist you. Hidden behind certain blue colored doors will give the player a random item through a roulette drawing system including various power-ups and health upgrades. There are six areas in total that you have to complete. Similar to the original, you can use elevators to crush the enemies, but there are other things in the environment you can use as well, such as oil drums that can be exploded, among others. This features a nice cinematic intro as well as cutscenes in between each level. The fantastic soundtrack was composed by you. The fantastic soundtrack was composed by Yasuhisa Watanabe and works perfectly with the rest of the gameplay experience. The year 2000 brought us the release of Elevator Action EX which was released for the Game Boy Color. This handheld update to the original title features three different characters with different attributes. You also get cutscenes but the tried and true gameplay remains pretty much the same and it feels great especially on the Game Boy Color. Your goal is to retrieve secret documents discs and keys and make it to the bottom of the building in one piece. There are also doors with question marks which contain different weapons. Thankfully you also have a health bar. The game was rescanned and released the same year on the same platform as Dexter's Laboratory Robot Revenge. In 2005, Taito released a couple of conversions exclusively for mobile phones including Chase HQ 3D and Elevator Action 3D. This is a first person shooter that essentially plays the same as the arcade game, but it does offer a couple of new additions such as bullet time which slows down enemy movement and also a map feature which shows the floor plans including where all the documents are located. Elevator Action Old and New was released for the Game Boy Advance in 2002. As the title suggests, this compilation features the original arcade game of Elevator Action as well as a new arranged version with updated graphics, music, and play mechanics. For starters, the updated music is excellent and it's really catchy and I found myself humming it long after the game was over. Similar to the previous follow-ups, you also have three different characters to choose from, each with different abilities. You also have a health bar and new enemies such as zombies and robots. There are also different items and power-ups hidden behind the various colored doors. The game is a lot of fun to play and it was rather cool having an almost arcade perfect version to play on my Game Boy Advance back in the day. In 
2009, Taito released a very unique arcade shooter by the name of Elevator Action Death Parade. This is a first-person light gun shooter that features a very unique cabinet. This one or two player game sees your character explore 100 stories of a skyscraper with you every so often having to enter elevators to either head for cover or go to a different floor. To do this, you have to press one of the buttons on the cabinet to either go up or down a level just like a real elevator. Although this sounds like a typical first person shooter, what really makes it shine is the mechanical elevator door that opens and shut just like a real elevator. It is such a unique situation and unfortunately, I never got a chance to see one in a real arcade back in the day. Being such a huge fan of the original elevator action and its follow-up, I would have had a blast playing this game. In 2011, Elevator Action Deluxe was released for the PlayStation Network. This is a 2.5D remake of the original game in which, once again, you have to infiltrate numerous buildings in order to retrieve secret documents pertaining to a doomsday device that will kill us all. The game features some fantastic graphics with the gameplay speed cranked up to 11. The action takes place across a number of different areas including skyscrapers, factories, and hotels. The power of the elevator is at your command once again, but this time you have extra weapons available the further into the game you get such as laser guns, rocket launchers, and machine guns. There are 50 stages in total in the campaign mode, but once again, thankfully, you have a life bar. The music is also really well done with some nice upbeat tunes playing in the background while you lay the smack down on all the rogue secret agents. The coolest thing for me was playing four players simultaneously either competitively or cooperatively. If you're not a fan of the new game you can always try the original arcade version which was included. There are even a number of secret characters included from earlier Taito arcade games. Released just a few months back was Elevator Action Returns S Tribute, which was released on Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Die-hard Elevator Action fans have been clamoring for a re-release of this fantastic game, and developer City Connection did a fantastic job. This is an emulated version of the Sega Saturn port, which is pure gold. A lot of new additions were added to the title, such as a level select, customizable controls, rewind the gameplay, a slow mode which obviously slows everything down, click and save anywhere you like, unlimited credits, and more. Some people have complained about getting the controller to set up properly, but I didn't have a problem using my Xbox One pad. The game is only $15 on Steam at the moment, and considering the Sega Saturn version will run you over $200, this is a fantastic deal, especially with all the features it contains. My Arcade released a tiny tabletop arcade version of Elevator Action and it replicates the look and feel of the original arcade game. 
While physically it looks great, it's not the actual arcade that is playing on the inside, but an emulated version of the NES game. Thankfully, the NES version is really good, which I will cover more in depth in just a bit. Another cool version I discovered was the LCD handheld, which I believe was released in 1997. Now, most LCD games aren't that great in my opinion, but this one does a pretty good job at replicating the arcade game, although stripped down. We have Agent Otto zip lining in, secret documents, elevators, and some pretty good music. You even have your waiting car at the bottom to whisk you away. Twenty Twenty One saw another arcade release by the name of Elevator Action Invasion. This one or two player light gun game features a semi enclosed cabinet with stereo sound and a 65 inch HD screen. There are 18 levels and three bosses in total. A prototype was in development for the Atari 2600, which was about 90% complete when it was cancelled. It was only a rumor for the longest time until a former Atari employee came across the prototype. It's hard to believe this game was programmed for the Atari back in 1983, because this is leaps and bounds above what we thought was possible. Pretty much everything from the arcade game has been included, although as I mentioned, it's not 100% complete and there are some bugs in the game. The graphics do a great job at representing the arcade original and, surprisingly, there is very little flicker even with multiple enemies on screen at the same time. The speed of the game is nice and fast and the controls are responsive. There is no music or sound effects, but it's still an amazing achievement, especially back in 1983. For the amount of free publicity I've given the fine folks over at Champ Games, you would think they'd send me some merchandise, but so far, Zilcheruni. I truly believe in my heart of hearts that they must have made a deal with the devil because they have produced an absolutely fantastic version of Elevator Action for the beloved 2600. The name of the game has been changed to Elevator Agent, which is a one or two player game which is very close to the arcade game it's based on. The graphics are phenomenal and the music and sound effects are even better. Two button game pads are also supported so the game feels just like the arcade game. Pretty much everything made it over from the zip line to shooting out the lights and your getaway car down below. You can pre-order the game now which ships in the second quarter of 2023. You can download the demo right now for free on the Champ Games website. Majority of the home computer conversions we are going to take a look at were done by Quicksilva Software and were released in 1987. The first on the list was the game I was most excited to get, which was the Commodore 64 version. As soon as the game boots up, you can see that the colors are completely wrong. Otto looks like he fell asleep in a tanning bed for three days. Apparently, regular sized elevators were in short supply, so they decided to put in a freight elevator instead. Or perhaps they felt Otto was going to put on a massive amount of weight. The game is full of bugs galore with terrible hit detection. Sometimes you will shoot the enemies and the bullets will go right through them and they will just keep advancing forward. Also, 
When you die, you restart at the top of the skyscraper no matter how far down you made it. The music has also been changed, but at least it's upbeat and sounds pretty good. If you do manage to make it to the bottom, you don't get to go all the way down to the ground floor. Your car will magically roll over and pick you up even though nobody is driving it. As far as the total package goes, the developers missed out on just about everything that made the arcade game great. I haven't been this disappointed since I found out RuPaul was a man. The game was also released for a number of Japanese-only home computers such as the Fujitsu FM7. The graphics aren't bad in this particular version, but the problem comes with its lack of scrolling. It uses a flick screen style which can be a bit jarring at times. The music and sound effects are really good and it seems as if everything from the arcade game has been carried over. The Sharp X1 version looks to be a port of the FM7, although running just a little bit slower. The graphics are not quite as detailed as found in the previous versions and the music is not quite as good either. The playability is also off due to the overall speed of the game. The Game Boy version was released in 1991 and turned out rather well despite its varying shades of green as seen on the original Game Boy. This version offers up a number of changes that would be used later for its follow-up such as multiple weapons, a life bar, alarms, multiple enemies including guard dogs and robots and more. The gameplay remains the same, although thanks to the Game Boy manual, we now know that Agent 17 is retrieving extremely valuable computer disks which are being safeguarded against BGI or Bad Guys International. The skyscrapers are only 20 stories high in this version as opposed to 30 in the arcade game. The sprites are well defined and while the scrolling could be a little bit smoother, it doesn't detract overall from the gameplay experience. The music features a nice jazzed up version of the original tunes and they sound pretty good. This is an excellent conversion especially for a 1991 handheld black and white release. The Zenex Spectrum version does a good job at replicating the arcade game while keeping the color clash to a minimum. The graphics have been given a bit of a makeover but it doesn't hurt the core gameplay and it does make everything else a bit easier to recognize. The action is fast and furious although the scrolling is choppy. We also get some pretty good music while we play but it's not the arcade tunes we are accustomed to but a completely original soundtrack.
the Amstrad version does a pretty good job at replicating the arcade visuals. The graphics are fairly detailed with plenty of vibrant colors all throughout. The gameplay is fast, although the scrolling is a bit choppy. We do have music while we play, and once again, it's an original tune. One odd difference is you no longer have a sports car waiting for you at the bottom to whisk you away, but instead, a jalopy that looks like it stepped right out of the 1930s. The NES version was one of my favorites growing up back in the day. Growing up, this was as close as you were going to get on a home system not running under emulation and it's a really excellent conversion. This game has it all from the opening grappling hook animation to your waiting getaway car and everything in between. The game features the same tight controls as found in the arcade original. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, if it's not tight, it's not right. This game would be re-released on various Nintendo platforms including the Wii Virtual Console and the Nintendo Switch. The Sega SG-1000 version was actually programmed by Sega themselves. The sprites are strictly two colors with not a lot of detail. Apparently this game takes place during hurricane season because all the rogue agents attempting to take you out have lost their hats. The scrolling and animation in particular is a bit choppy making it hard to avoid the enemy's bullets. We do, however, get fantastic music and excellent controls. It's just unfortunate that everything isn't just a tad bit smoother. The MSX version looks pretty good in still shots, but once you start descending in the elevator, you will see what a stuttery, juddery mess this game is. After playing this game for about 5 minutes, my eyeball started twitching and I had to stop. The sprites are easily recognizable, although the enemy characters are only one color. The actual gameplay itself is close to the original, but the scrolling is extremely slow. The music is adequate and it controls fairly well, but unless you're interested in having a stroke, I would definitely avoid this game. There you have it my fine feathered friends, perhaps the most comprehensive history of elevator action. This was one of my favorite arcade games growing up and I can recall playing this after our Saturday afternoon bowling leagues. The game will celebrate 40 years this year so if you've never had a chance to collect the secret documents all the while going up and down in an elevator be sure and give this game a shot you'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.